Hi everyone, welcome to the Management Explainer. This video is about what you should know about platform business models. When the computer industry started in the mid 20th century, there was a general feeling that computers would change the world, but it was totally unclear how this would happen. In the 1990s and in the 2000s, the current crop of technology entrepreneurs arrived, funded by their venture capitalist friends. This gradually led to the internet and social media as we know them today, and made many technology entrepreneurs extremely wealthy. In this video, I'm talking about the structure, the way of management thinking, if you like, that enabled all of this. I'm talking about platforms, of course. Platforms are probably the most powerful kind of business in the present. This is reflected in the fact that many of the world's most valuable businesses are platforms. These include Alphabet, better known as Google, Apple, Meta, who have Facebook, and Amazon. But that doesn't help us with the question of what a platform actually is in the first place. Here's a definition. A platform provides a service enabling value-creating interactions between external actors. This means that a platform offers others the chance to start interacting in a useful way and provides a place where these interactions can happen. But before we can go any farther, we need to clear up something else first. That's because not everyone thinks that platforms are business models. Some people, especially designers and engineers, call certain design architectures platforms as well. Such architectures are based on the idea that some designs work in a hierarchical way and are made up of modular elements. Modularity is the ability to interchange these elements. This is, of course, not what is meant by platforms in this video. When tech entrepreneurs, and pretty much everyone else for that matter, talk about platforms, they refer to some business models as platforms. A business model is a rationale of how a business creates value for its customers and, unsurprisingly, focuses on commercial things. In essence, business models capture how the business understands itself and what it does for its customers. So let's take a quick moment to recap. Platforms have emerged as an extremely powerful business model and are based on the notion of letting their members interact with each other in some form, rather than creating value directly. In case you need to know more, I'm putting some references in the description. Now, let's carry on. So what about the difference between conventional businesses and platforms? Well, the answer to that question lies in the way businesses think about themselves. At the heart of a conventional business, you'll find some sort of process in which value is generated for the customer, such as making orange juice or coding software. This process is normally called a value chain. In contrast, platforms don't see their main contribution as doing something at all. Rather, they allow other people to do something valuable by interacting. In other words, platforms provide the opportunity for value-creating interactions between their members. This means that platforms are a venue more than anything else in which the owners set the rules and charge their members for the privilege of using it, of course. It's important to realize that the members can be businesses or individuals like you and me. Platforms have had a massive impact on the economy and on our everyday lives. This goes so far that many people think that platforms almost automatically win against other businesses in competition. Let's hear it from the experts. When platform-based businesses enter the same marketplace, the platforms virtually always win. This has happened in many different industries, such as advertising, music, retail, basically anywhere where information is traded in some form. The main reason behind the current dominance and power of platform business models is a phenomenon called network effects, which really deserves its own video. But it's also important to realize that platforms are responsible for a number of big problems. One such problem is that platforms have a tendency to result in huge monopolies emerging from what is known as winner-takes-all competition. Just look at Amazon or Google, for example. In the long run, this will stifle competition and will funnel enormous amounts of money into the owner's pockets. Another problem 
is that platforms routinely use manipulative practices against their users and customers, meaning that they're just not honest about how they operate. Consider the current political debate about echo chambers and social media, for example, or the recent scandals of platforms being used to undermine democratic processes. A third problem is that platforms often exploit their users' data commercially and without permission, for example by selling it to other parties. This can be very lucrative, but obviously isn't the right thing to do. I hope this video has given you a useful overview of the basics of platforms and shown that it's often quite unclear in whose interests the platforms are acting, except in the interests of the tech bros who run them of course, and the venture capitalists who fund them. But what about you? Do you think platforms are the way forward in business? Or do they rely too much on acting against their users' interests? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching.